Hi, I'm Sean Gannon, and this is Minute Math, and today we're learning about determine the domain and range of an inverse function and restrict the domain of a function to make it one to one. Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help, you use Minute Math. So, let's look at this graphic right here. It has two ovals. One's the domain of f, one's the range of f. But the first one's also labeled the range of inverse of f, and the second oval is labeled domain of f inverse. So the outputs of the function f are the inputs to f inverse. So the range of f is also the domain of f inverse. Likewise, because the inputs to f are the outputs of f inverse, the domain of f is the range of f inverse. We can visualize the situation right here. Okay, so that graph basically rep or that image represents the domain and range of a function and its inverse. All right, so let's go with a quick definition here: domain and range of inverse functions. The range of a function f of x is the domain of the inverse function f inverse of x. The domain of f of x is the range of f inverse of x. And this is going to be tricky when we have to restrict. Right, restrict some domains for the inverse to make it work. All right, so here we have uh, the list, our example here, it's number four, and we see all the toolkit functions there. Okay, we want, we want to identify which of the toolkit functions, besides the quadratic function, are not one to one, and find a restricted domain on which each function is one to one, if any. A toolkit function reviewed before. We restrict the domain in such a fashion that the function assumes all y values exactly once. So we can see our toolkit functions right there, um, all of them listed out, the constant, the identity, the quadratic, cubic, reciprocal, reciprocal squared, cube root, square root, and absolute value. So the constant function, right, the constant function that's straight line across is not one to one. There is no domain except for a single point on which it could be one to one. So the constant function has no inverse. So again, if we look at our graphs right here, we can see these two are not one to one as they are. If you remember the horizontal line test, a horizontal line going through across, if it intersects twice, right, or more times, that function is not one to one. These two have that happen besides we talk about the square root function, we, we said we're not gonna mention that one. So we can see the constant function, right, is this a straight line across, and so it's always, whenever at that point, it's always intersecting the absolute value function here. If you restrict the domain from zero to infinity, it would pass a horizontal line test, making it one to one. If the reciprocal square, again, we restrict the domain from zero to infinity, basically just the right-hand side here, and that would pass a horizontal line test, making it one to one, allowing us to have an inverse function there. All right? Well, I hope this video was informative for you, and if it was, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and like this video. This helps us make more free math lessons for you and for everyone else. So, as always, thanks for watching. Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help you use Minute Math. Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help you use Minute Math. MinuteMathTutor.com